The spiritual battles that you face day to day are never ending. It's constantly battle in your mind between the good and bad. And those battles prepare you for what's going to happen in the future. When witchcraft is being done on you, or at least attempted to be done on you, whoever is doing it, they want to strip that healthy and strong relationship that you have with God away from you because they don't have that. They're suckers. They fall for the lies of the enemy and they're working for the enemy trying to do that, trying to take you away from God. And it's weakness. It's weakness. It's strength to go to God. It's strength to go to God. It's weak to fall victim to the devil's lies, to believe that, to do the easy thing which in life is to do the wrong thing. It's easy to do the wrong thing. It just comes so natural because we are in the flesh. Our spirit is. We are in this world, but not of this world. And so many people just fall victim to that because they don't have that strengthened relationship that they ha that you have with God. And that's why they're trying to take you away from that. Your light intimidates them. Your honesty really intimidates them. The calmness that you have really sets them off because they don't have that. Because they choose to do the easy thing and sin, live a life of sin. And everybody falls short. Everybody falls short. <laughs> but they don't repent of it. They still go back to it and back to it and back to it. They have so much hatred for the honesty that you bring to the table that it just gets pent up inside of them. They don't have a like a release for all that. So they take it out on you, but they won't take it out on you to your face. Because that's what intimidates them. They can't do it to your face. So they do it behind your back when you're not there. You follow? They try to ruin you and tarnish your reputation when you're not there. Because if you're not there, what are you going to do about it? You're not there. You know what I mean? You're not there to do nothing about it. But when you're there... They'll be all buddy-buddy. Why do they do that? They're just sheep. They dress. They are clothed as sheep, but they are wolves. They are wolves, but they are clothed as sheep. And what that means, you know, they play good to your face, like they're a fellow brother or a fellow sister of Christ. Not all. Not all of them are like that. Trust me, not all of them are like that. Some of them are good people, down-to-earth good people. But the ones that are constantly, that are... In your mind, the ones you have bad feelings about is what I should really say. Don't think that you're crazy to think that because you're into the, the spirit that's inside of you, your spirit that's telling you that for a reason. It keeps bringing that up and up and up to not trust these people, to not get close to these people because they're not who they say they are. They're looking for information. They're looking for something to turn into a bad thing. It could be a good thing that you have to share but they'll ruin it. They'll tarnish it. They'll do whatever they can to destroy it because it's not them. They don't want to see other people doing good because they're so selfish. And they see when they compare. Comparison is the thief of all, thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of all joy. And they stay doing that because you're doing better than them. And that really angers the darkness inside of them. It doesn't anger that soul, I would say. Because the darkness is what's pulling the strings of that soul. And when the darkness is pulling the strings of the soul, it manipulates them. It makes them do things that they wouldn't normally do because it's not them. And I'm not going to sit here and go to an extreme and say they're possessed by the devil. And I'm not going to say that. But that hatred, that envy, the jealousy, the jealousy in them it prevents them from being honest the pride the selfish ambition it prevents them from being honest and as someone as a child of god you can be honest with them don't be scared to be honest with them but also don't expect for them to say something when you're not there, that's honesty. If you tell them something, don't expect them to just relay it 
to other people the exact way you said it. They'll manipulate it. They'll turn it. They'll toss it. They'll twist it to what they want. It, they want it to be. They'll manipulate it into what they want it to be. And then that says, that's why I said earlier, they'll try to ruin your reputation. They'll try to destroy you, spread lies. And other people out there, they're suckers too. They don't got nothing else really good going on either. So that's why they suck it up. They eat it up. That's how bad their life is. They believe the lies. The lies that are being spread about someone or whatever negativity that's going on, they don't try to help, all right? They don't try to help. I mean, what are you going to do about that? They don't want to help. They don't want to help. You can't help everybody, but you don't. they don't want to help. All right, fine. But they want to focus on the negativity going on that they have no involvement in. Some people's lives are really that bad. It sucks that bad. And it sucks to understand that not being them because they could get stronger with God. They could have a stronger relationship with God, but they choose not to. You follow me? They could fix what they got going on if they really opened up their heart to God. It's crazy. Over a period of time, you could really change your life coming to God about certain things, about everything, about everything. The people who are coming up against you as a child of God, as a follower of Christ, they don't see a lot of things because they, they got the veil over their face. They're blind. I've been there myself. We've all been there at some point. They are blind to the truth. And what they don't see is when they come up against a follower of Christ, they come up to fight against Christ. And last time I checked, Christ is undefeated. He will come down from the heavens to defeat the devil forever. And he will be put in hell along with all the people who decided to follow and worship the devil. And not everyone is directly worshiping Satan. It's through all the distractions that are in this world that they worship him by. It's all these other religions, all these other, how would I say this? Oh, I could say that through other religions. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and throw a bunch of people under the bus for whatever they follow. Whatever you follow is whatever you follow. I'm not going to sit here and put someone on the spot for that. But the only way, to my knowledge, fact check me, the only way to get to heaven is through the sun. How can you get to heaven, to the Father, if you don't follow the Son, Christ? Maybe it's just me. No, it's not just me. The Bible even said that. You got to get to the Father. You have to go through the Son to get to the Father. Got to follow Christ to get to God. A day will come when everybody is judged. When you come face to face with God. Not a single soul can escape coming face to face with God. It's inevitable. No one's going to be able to escape it. He brought you into this world. He will take you out. And you will come face to face with him. The people who are committing this witchcraft, the witches and warlocks, that they, they have a deep understanding. They have a deep understanding about of what's going to happen to them when they face the second death. And they're so scared and so lazy to not come to God. They will cling on to all the lies that Satan has to offer. And Satan has never told the truth. He is the master of lies. I forget exactly how it is worded, but hear me out. He comes as a beaming light. I can, I'll look that up. I'll look that up. He comes as a beaming light, a ray of light. Like he is pure darkness. Why would you want to believe the lies of pure darkness? Well, you have, you're living a life of sin. Like I spoke about earlier, you have that veil. You're living in a life of sin. When people are trying to wreck your reputation, they see your value. And don't, go to, don't get it twisted. You can see your value too. You're not stupid. You might have been born at night, but you weren't born last night. That's a good saying. I heard that from a guy on YouTube. That's a good saying. I might have been born last night. I might have been born at night, but not last night. Last night. That's a good one. But they see so many things in you. And they believe that you can't see the things they see. And some things you might not be able to see just yet. And that's all right. That's all right. Because... I promise you, one day you're going to come to see those things that they saw. But they believe you can't see it, so they're going to try to destroy you. They'll try to destroy you. And like I said, 
people are going to be judged. They're going to be judged on what they've done. And in, that's after when they come face to face. In this life, you're going to be punished for what you've done to other people. I've been punished for what I've done to other people. Nobody can escape that. Nobody can escape that. The Lord will punish you for things you have done to people. And people are so arrogant and just arrogant. That's a, good, that's a way to put it. They're so arrogant to think that the things they do to people, the small, very small wins they have over people inflates their ego so much because their life is so crap. And that's such a nice way of putting it. That is such a nice way of putting it, the way I just said right there. But they try to wreck you in any way they can because they been doing that to themselves. The words you speak come from your heart. The actions you do come from your heart. If you have an evil heart, you're going to do evil things in this life. But if you've got a good heart, no matter what you're facing, no matter what might be going on, you're going to continue to do good things. You won't be perfect. No one is perfect. No one is perfect in this life. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 6, 16 through 19 to you real quick. But please take time on your own to further investigate or to go into this specifically or anything in the Bible, all right? These six things does the Lord hate. Yes, yeah, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devise wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running to mischief, mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Those seven abominations that the Lord hates. You're a smart person. You're a smart person. Don't get that twisted. Don't let the strongholds that are in your mind make you think otherwise. And, that, and those strongholds go for a lot of other things. A lot of other things, man. Um, but don't let them stray you away from God, the lies that are in your head. Don't make them make you believe the lies. Don't me don't let them. With what those seven abominations that the Lord hates, what I just said to you, that what I just read, don't tell yourself a lie by saying you don't know the people that are in your life that are committing these things willingly and on a regular basis. I spoke earlier about people being clothed about wolves being clothed in sheep's clothing, all right? And those people are just like that. They're going to put up a good look in front of you. They're going to make themselves look good in front of you. But keep praying for discernment to discern bad from good. Because eventually you're going to catch on to things. And it's going to take some time. Or maybe, maybe some of it's very obvious for some people. Maybe in your situation it's very obvious with what's going on. But eventually you're going to catch on to these things. And don't let those people drag you back away from God. Because I'm telling you, if they're doing anything like that, with what I just read, on a regular basis, consistently, willingly, sinning like that, they don't have a relationship with God. They don't. They really don't. If you had a relationship with God, you wouldn't be doing those things that the Lord hates. And... They're going to continue to try to pull you away. They're going to try, try. They will not succeed. A, a weapon will form, but it will not prosper. It will not prosper against you. You're a child of God. None of them will prosper against you. They'll try. They will always try, but don't let them drag you away from the most high. Especially in the last days, you never really know. Nobody knows, even the Lord, even Jesus himself doesn't know when he's going to come down, but he's going to come down in these last days. He will come down. And at the very end of this video, I want to leave you with something talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it resides within you as a follower of Christ. Do not forget about the Holy Spirit. Show an attitude of gratitude to the Holy Spirit. I was watching... Um, this guy's name's Vlad. He's a pastor. And he said that to me, and it's 
it really just, it, he didn't say it to me, but on the video he said it, and it really stuck out to me. It really stuck out to me, and it hit me. And it showed something that I had been lacking. So I just wanted to pass that message on to someone who might be, who might be forgetting about the Holy Spirit. Even that, that's a terrible thing to do. But I'll tell you right now, it happened to me. And I don't want that to happen to you. So just show an attitude of gratitude towards the Holy Spirit. And trust in God's plan. Trust God's plan and stay prayed up in this thing. Stay prayed up in this thing. Because we're in the end times. You never know when when it's time. You never know when it's time. Nobody does. So it's best to just stay on your A game. Draw as close as you can to God. No one's asking you to be perfect. No one's asking you to be perfect. But the best you can do is to strive to do what you can. To be the best version of yourself possible in all aspects. Hopefully this message helped you in some way. But if not, there's there's a whole book you can go read. And if you're not going to do that, there's a whole bunch of videos out there you can go watch. Go to church. You can learn something from that too. You can. There's a lot of singing in church, but there there's a lot of messages and good information you can get out of it by just simply showing up and listening. Have a great day.